Hello everybody and welcome to Secret Wars TLDR. It's a conversation show where we talk about the tie-ins for the currently running Secret Wars series. If you want to learn more about Secret Wars, the main series, you can watch our other show, Off the Rack, where we talk about that. Uh, so, everyone read an individual tie-in. They, they had their own exclusive. It's almost like we're Battle World, And we each had our own realm that we covered. And uh, we all actually sat down and also read A-Force. Uh, which was more of a mix-up on our part. Than that was yeah. supposed to be my battle world. I don't actually have a battle world. Technically. You have all of them. You have battle world. I'm Ben. I'm representing Kun Loon, uh, the comic master of kung fu. I am Sal. I did Deadpool Secret Secret Wars. I'm Tiffany, and I did Battle World. I'm Ethan, and I did Planet Hulk. Tiffany, why don't you jump in with A-Force here. Uh, this is one of the realms? Yes, technically it is. It's about one of the realms. So A-Force is written by Marguerite Bennett and G. Wilson, Willow Wilson. Yes. Uh, that, currently writing uh, Ms. Marvel. Oh, there you go. Uh, with pencils anymore. by uh, Jorge Molina. I had a, I was to think about that one. I was like, wait. Don't be American for a second. <laughs> <laughs> this one takes place, the location's Arcadia, which is an island in this... It's essentially a reservoir held up by the shield. That cover... That's, we can throw that up. It's yeah. for me. I th thought this was a really awesome cover. For me, yeah. I was like, just seeing the preview, I was like, I want this. Like, I want this book. Number two for me was the fact that they're all posed like you would normally draw any yeah. cover of a team. Yeah. No one is provocatively posed no. in any way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think what I like about it is that um, <clears throat> there's like a spectrum of. Like female personality there, because mm -hmm. like certainly Dazzler and uh, Sister Grim, you With may not see great a, a male Dazzle pal. <laughs> you may not see a male pose like that, but it's okay to have them like that sometimes. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. as long as you feel free to like have a, a strong female pose as well. But I like that. Like there's a spectrum. We're not trying to pigeonhole anyone into no. Everyone has a range. At, at either end of that range. Yeah. I agree. We're but good. anyway, um, this book just takes place on this island where they really lay it out for you. There's, it's fairly normal. Like, there's good, yeah. there's bad. It reminds me a little bit of Themyscira from the DC mm. Universe. Right, except there are... There are men, men on that. But they're yeah, not... Yes. They're not, like, a fiercely territorial, this is our land, and we can't right. let outside... We can't yeah. let the men infect the world. Right. It, it was, like, for, right. for all the controversy and all the, and the, the all-female cover, there's no, like, feminist agenda no. type thing... No. In, like, infused in this book. No, it's just a world where the protectors happen to all be... Yeah. Women. Right, and, like, and, the men are not enslaved. No, no, nor are they... Yeah, they're not no, readers. We, we, <laughs> certainly, we certainly see Luke Cage pushing a baby carriage, but I don't really think that's out of... No, that's not a character, character of Luke Cage at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but we have, like, female superheroes from all walks of life in the Marvel Universe who, yes. who are... Put here into this battle world, mm -hmm. and they are the guardians of the battle world. And you have She Hulk being a leader, and it kind of just starts out with just their day to day, you know, like what they do. Mm -hmm. And I think what I like the most about it is how not overtly stereotypically female yes. the day to day is. Yeah, it's like right. it's almost as though they wrote this not thinking about gender at all, and then it just happened to be that yeah. they were. Female. It's almost like yeah. they started with, <laughs> like they gave, like it was a script. Written years ago, starring Captain America and Iron Man and Thor, and, yeah. and they just changed all the names. <laughs> and they were like, right, because females can be like that. Yeah, it you don't matter. have to write it like that. Yeah. Um, and then they deal with a megalodon. Which <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> a sharp, pointy megalodon. Yes, yeah, yeah truly the greatest. Of them. Which I really, I was like, that's an interesting thing to do is to make their antagonist a, like a genderless monster. Exactly, not like they're fighting men or the, women, women or you some. You variant. have to deal with that. It's all right. Let's it's just, a shark. All right, we're let's ease a people really into this. Shark. Yeah. But it's, it, it, well, it's the, a it's perfect, the king of sharks. Yeah. <laughs> a perfectly tempered weapon of death, <laughs> evolutionarily forged. <laughs> This entire sequence was incredibly confusing. Maybe, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Maybe it was cool. Well, because Dazzler cool. says that her powers take sound and convert it to essentially lasers. Yes. So maybe what it is is it's making a sound oh, and a she's converting it. The and then, okay. right. So anyway, they they defeat the Megalodon essentially by removing it from the water, <laughs> uh, which is like Perfect. you have you have effectively taken Killed care it. of this. Yeah, um, it's good, but it could still thrash around. Right. Yeah. Certainly. Which is why I assume Miss America does what she does. Right, and Miss America takes it a step too far and takes Meg the Megalodon and chucks it over the shield. Which is yes. a shame because like that could have made a whole lot of good food. Yeah. Well, maybe. I mean, have you ever eaten a Megalodon? 
No, but yeah, I know. But shark I, is a delicacy. No, I've it's heard that the fin is. So they're going to have like one big soup and be done with it? Well, well, that's such a, a waste. A fin like that? That could make soup for an entire First person. First of all, yeah, they, mentioned, they mentioned, <laughs> Miss, um, uh, Miss America mentions PETA. So, I mean, if they did that's that. Right. That's right. Yeah. PETA apparently exists. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, in Arcadia. Come on. Well, the problem Why is it's it's dead? it belong Star in the water because yet. I think the established... The, the megalodon is from another place. It's not from our country. Right. No, it's it, it to be certainly there. is true. So it may be an invasive species. But anyway, um, when wait, does that mean if they go into the water, they're in, they're violating their borders? No, no, no. The no. water is fine. It's just that the megalodon came from another place, not just the water. Yeah, like, it's like it, it came from teleported into the water. And, right. and I don't think animals uh, count. Yeah, yeah, doom does a law. Doom, doom cares doom. not for megalodons. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> but that's what we see a, a Thor, who I was like. <gasps> I know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, turns out, and I don't know if we should put spoilers up. Yeah, sure. I mean, we're going to spoil all these books. Yeah, it's to happening. Some degree, yeah. But, um, you know but it turns out Falcon is. Well, Captain cool. America. Well, yeah, yeah Captain, Captain America. America. Captain Falcon, yep. whatever you want to call him, um, is in the Thor Corps. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting, an interesting use. Yeah, I like the use of him. I mean, like, well, there's probably a million No, I gotta tell you, that's pretty smart, though, if Doom was like, no, mm -hmm. we're gonna keep him, but, like, we can't just have the Captain Americas out there. They no. think mm -hmm. in such a way, I can't control that. Yes. But they are great peacekeepers. So, right, they're leaders, Thor -Core. They're, and, they, and they won't be satisfied being peons. I gotta give them some, like, measure of authority. Exactly. Yeah. Um... So Miss America is going to be arrested. Um, she Hulk does try to plea to Sheriff Strange, who's like, "No, no, you well, no. know, you're a Baroness. You understand, like this Doom's is the law, law. That's it. and we have to upkeep that." And yeah. sorry, screw you, Loki. Yes, Goddess Loki. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've seen at many a convention. <laughs> Most okay. of us, that would be the first time we had seen female Loki. No, no, no. Female Loki is. is, I, well, is... I know. I met most of us in this room. Oh, I think yes. That yeah. We have I seen. Know. Yeah. <laughs> that's where right. we first were introduced to female <laughs> yeah. Loki. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I know she does exist in the. We comic. see her a lot. <laughs> but um, she is kind of in charge of Miss America and Sister yeah, Grimm. Like, they're her ward. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Um, which, at first, I thought they had a relationship, like, she yeah. and Miss America, and mm -hmm. then I was like, oh, no, no, this is a, a more of a caring, like... Yeah, yeah like a mother... Or, or like a, like a yeah, student pupil. which I think yeah. is an interesting... Like, first of all, it's fun to have Loki on the side of good. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you also know immediately by it being Loki that you can't trust her. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> and it's, but now it's going to be even more interesting, I think, to put her in this element of... Uh, parenthood or yes. like of mm -hmm. you know concern, of guardianship right um and miss america is, is taken, taken yeah. and immediately like ever, like loki's like fuck you she hulk yes yeah but is she saying fuck you she's she hulk not, or is she like she, playing the she's like i know the medusa's got interest in being yeah, in being which, in charge i can play that up i love the fact that like Medusa's not happy not being in charge. Exactly. Uh, She's like, I'm pretty used to it. Whether or not yeah. they remember that was a point. Yeah, yeah, right. I think I'm supposed to be somebody important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then when Black Bolt fucked off, like, I was in charge. Yeah, yeah. I deposed Black Bolt. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. It's kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I do love the fact that She-Hulk is in charge of people like Medusa and the Phoenix. Yes. I was yeah. like, this is Phoenix? awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Um, but like, you know, out of all those people, I mean, even though Captain Marvel is there, like, She-Hulk really seems to be like she's got a good head on her shoulder, she's mature. Yeah. Um, and what does she do? She calls the Atlanteans, which is, I think, a really interesting element that Namor is still male, he's still there. Yeah. So again, just proving further, they're like, no, no, no. There are men in this world, yes. they have power, but we're just dealing with females who happen to be the guardians yes. of this world. Yeah. Exactly. Get over it. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. And they want him to find out. What, what's, what's going what? on with Megalodon and right. yep. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, justice for Megalodon Megalodon comes from the sea and yeah the, and they which, which I really appreciate probably heard something about this Megalodon attack <laughs> yeah <laughs> you've probably seen yeah. him before you know yeah. so yeah um, but I thought that was interesting too that it wasn't like they were like it's your fault no they didn't right. you are of the yeah, sea that's such a fucking typical thing to do yeah yeah let's attack <laughs> Atlantis uh, yeah. Atlantis yeah Atlantis yeah um, and then we have that last reveal um, which was kind of a reveal but not because she was on the cover yeah of um Captain Universe. Yes. Of Ooh. the universe showing up. Well, the universe was... spirit of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Universe was prevalent during Hickman's run before, uh, leading up to this and she was like she's like I think I'm like she's like I'm dying. Like something's fucking me up. And then S Secret Wars takes place. Interesting. Well, that's there. All the universes are, you know, destroyed. being snuffed out, yeah. But <clears throat> I mean, the books I think the books super interesting. Like I like um 
them using the email characters from the Marvel Pantheon who aren't in the forefront. Yes. Constantly. Like, well, yes, we have uh, Medusa and She-Hulk and um, Spider-Woman. Yeah. You do have, like, Sister Grimm and Miss America. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you have these people who don't always get as much screen time yep. or page, page time. time. Um being involved in yeah, this. Yeah, and I also like we didn't get like male ver turned into female versions with the exception of Loki, which right. is okay because they always do that anyway. Yeah, because like, that it was exists. nice for them for them to just go like, no, let me just open up the toy box and take yeah, out all the male action exactly. figures and just see what's left. Yeah, yeah. And, like use all those, and that's exactly. really cool. Exactly, it gives them an opportunity for everyone to be cool and do something interesting, or or prove that like the Marvel toy chest is full of rich, interesting characters that all that aren't all called Spider Man. Yeah, right. <laughs> I also really dug. This panel where the zombies from the Deadlands are like going for oh, the Oh, like, oh sweet! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't believe they let this thing go to waste. Yeah. Yeah. And see, by the way, that. anyone who ends up in the Deadlands when the Megalodon's there might actually have a chance yes. because they're going to be so preoccupied. <laughs> the Megalodon. <laughs> the Megalodon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what did you guys think about it? How did you feel about like art, writing, story, the idea of this whole concept? Each character had their own voice, and it was really cool. Yeah, I, I give it a 10 out of 10. Like, the art was always great and consistent. The characters were great. The writing was cool. Mm -hmm. Set up a good premise. I just liked it all around. I was like, this is a good, this is a great first issue. It's a terrific way to establish, like, the world, even though, like, the overall world is so weird and confusing mm -hmm. and bizarre. I get this, even in the, especially against the landscape. It helps me actually understand a little bit more about Battle World itself. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, you bring up a good point about how, like, the whole world's insane, and it's interesting that they're on an island. Yes. So, like, th they are so self-contained in a way. Yeah, as opposed to, like, the opportunity for there to probably be, like, an underground movement and, like, weird, like, connections between the borders of other right. realms. Mm -hmm. This one is very much, like, they probably have the least contact with right. the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it too. I thought it was I thought it was um, very well written. Yeah, um, kept my interest throughout. It was a good balance of you know fun action stuff and yeah. um, backstory. You know, they really I, I want to know more about this world. So that's yeah. good. You know, I want to know how it works on a day to day basis and how is it similar to and different from our world. So that they they drew me in and that's that's what you want to do. So absolutely, the introduction of the characters was fantastic and it definitely made me recognize. All right, well, this is a story mainly with female protagonists. Halfway through the story, at no point did I say to myself, well, where are the males? <laughs> yeah. right, right. It doesn't matter. Or, like, it did not matter at all. No. It didn't affect the story. The story yeah. was so competently written yeah. Yeah. that I was so involved and really on the side of, like, what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're going to get rid of her. They can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. There was a moment for me where I was like, these chicks are doing okay. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, for, oh, they're whole for a female. Yeah, good, good for she <laughs> for them. Yeah. No, it was a really compelling story. Yeah, yeah and but, it's, yeah. it's kind of an interesting point, too, is that the whole first issue wasn't just exposition. No. And right. nor was it just all action. It had a really delicate balance, which I think is a, a good sign for the start of a potential new series. Yeah. yeah. It also really well set up uh, Arcadia's position in Battle World mm -hmm. because there are other forces out there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and they're a force to be reckoned with. And here's here's interesting. At no point while I was reading this that I go, some of these people are cannon fodder. Yeah. I'm like, I, <laughs> yeah, they're no, in battle world. Something's probably going to happen, but like I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know who's you know going to die and yeah. who's not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that I guess all of us are recommending this. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Definitely, Very much. right? Yeah, pick it up. Um, even though we told you pretty much... What had happened? The, some of the main plot points, it's definitely worth a read. Even if you have interest in it, simply over the articles that were written about right, it, yeah. check it out. You know, it's it's a fun read. It's like, it's very superhero through and through. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. like in the best possible way. I'll kick things off with yes. Deadpool's Secret Secret Wars, because it has absolutely nothing to do <laughs> with Battle World or Secret Wars at all. Right. Uh, it's, it's written by Colin Bunn, who is no stranger to Deadpool, and it was drawn by... Mateo. Mateo Lolly. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it basically is just a huge retcon of the 1984 Secret Wars book, which we did on back issues, um, in which the superheroes are taken off of regular Earth, they're put on a patchwork planet made by the Beyonder, and then they fight. Whatever. It's dumb. The book knows it. And, and it does the best job of having... It's funny because Bunya does a nice job of taking like Shooter's writing and dialogue from... Secret Wars, mm -hmm. and has Deadpool punctuate it or comment on it. It's very much a retcon. It's almost like... I think the book would have might, might have worked better if Deadpool went back in time and stowed away. Mm -hmm. But in this, they're saying Deadpool actually went... Was there the whole and time. And it completely screws up 
like the, the 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 flow of original Secret Wars, which yeah. is of course a joke because it's an action figure commercial. Right. But uh, <laughs> but Deadpool being there is funny, and I say funny because funny. because Bun tries really hard to make it funny, yeah. and Secret Wars all by itself is funny in the context of today. Right. But having Deadpool go like what? <laughs> having Deadpool be the reader or be you guys reading the book go like no. <laughs> Is pretty funny, and having Deadpool respond and 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 question ridiculous decisions made by yeah. these characters simply to service this twelve issue story. Uh, this one's, of course, thankfully done in four, and uh, we get a nice last page reveal uh, that uses the plot points from Secret Wars, but also like changes the status quo for Deadpool a little bit, and it should be kind of fun. Okay. Um, it, it, do I recommend it? If you read Secret Wars, it's been done to death, like different alternate versions of Secret Wars. But this is fun. If you want to like, if you want to remember Secret Wars, and enjoy this weird, this like fourth wall breaking nostalgia trip, it's totally worth the ride. I think Deadpool is so overdone and done to death at this point. Mm. But him being in Secret Wars kind of makes sense. It doesn't make sense for why he would have been chosen to go, like at all. Right. right. And I think that Bun knows that, and so I'm, I'm expecting another shoe to drop when it comes to why Deadpool's there, and what it all means. But it has nothing to do with Battle World or Secret Wars. So if you just want... If you want to jump in on Marvel and you don't want to have anything to do with this, and in fact you're a big fan of like old school Marvel continuity, jump in and enjoy, because it's totally worth the ride. Do you think they're going to take the story and go and break Secret Wars from 1984 and have Deadpool just be like, well, that happened. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> it's definitely going to... I mean, like, Deadpool is... Deadpool is clearly... Like, the secret reason why certain, like, convenient things happened in Secret Wars. So it's just a big retcon. Mm. Uh, will they, like, I don't think they're going to, like, have it end differently. And then to have Deadpool like, look at the camera or the, or the reader and be like, now go pick up Secret Wars. <laughs> like, I think it's just going to be, like, a supplement right. in its own way. A, a humorous supplement. And if you don't like that kind of shit, just say it doesn't matter, right. it doesn't happen. Don't read it. I really hope he causes the black suit. Spider-Man. He makes a joke about it because his suit gets destroyed, and he says, "Like, you know, this is my only costume. It's not like we have a magical wish grant and superhero <laughs> suit that makes costumes out of nothing." And I'm like, "Oh, that's, that's coming." Like, that was one of the best lines in the book. Would cool. you say that you should probably have read Secret Wars to get most of the? What's interesting about if you, it? No, I think that it works on both levels. If you read Secret Wars, it's a great joke. If you haven't read Secret Wars. You like Deadpool, mm -hmm. and so you will enjoy Deadpool interacting with 1984 versions of the Marvel Universe, and it's such a simple, basic premise that you won't have a hard time following. Right, like, oh, he's making fun of this old-school comic. It's exactly. Silly. And the circumstances surrounding it, and who's involved and stuff, it's, it's ridiculous. So it's totally worth it, I think, but nothing to do with this. Yeah. Okay. That's why I picked it. I was like, right. we're going to do this one. <laughs> And moving on... Well, it's funny that you should talk about, you know, a book not having anything to do with Secret Wars and Battle World, because yeah. I'm pretty sure my book, Masters of Kung Fu, had nothing to do with Battle World as well. Really? It's yeah, just... it's really strange. Written by Hayden Blackman and drawn by Talibor Talashik. Now, the book is it starts... not in one of the... Oh, it is! Oh, Kung okay. is a world, okay. well, and it's here. Well, then it has kind of to do with it. Yeah, yeah in a way, of, you know, if it wanted to shut out the entire exterior world and right. ignore the fact that it was happening... Which I think with Kun Loon actually kind of makes sense, mm -hmm. because okay. it is a secret world that's been kept hidden away for a very long time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it starts off with a great background of how the Kun Loon world was created, and these ten schools that all fought each other. Or maybe it was more than ten schools that fought each other. But the two uh, schools that really came down to it were the Masters of the Ten Rings and the Masters of the Iron Fist. Mm. Uh, and then they decided that they were going to have a peace from the bloodshed, uh, by killing each other. Ah, right. As I said, it's yeah. it's a piece from the bloodshed with more bloodshed. Right. <laughs> but uh, in this book, the Masters of the Ten Rings have been the ones that uh, took over. And I I'm not positive on this, but I'm pretty sure in regular Kun Loon, the Iron Fists yes. took over. Yeah. And have been controlling Kun Loon. I'm excited about the Ten Rings thing. Does the Mandarin show up? <laughs> no. By the way, when you, said, first thought. when you said the Masters of the Ten Rings versus the Masters of the Iron Fist, I was like, so it's Sonic versus Mario? Yeah. Because it's rings and, and, and punching. <laughs> when so. they said Ten Rings, I thought it was like the rings that they wear on their arms. Oh. Like those kind of rings. I didn't realize it was like... I assume it rings. would be the Mandarin's rings. Well, that would make sense. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, anyway, the... Story starts off uh, talking about the son 
of the Master of the Ten Rings, uh, the prince, the exile prince, because he killed a different master. Um, he's drunk and he's hanging out in a park, and um, these disciples of the Ten Rings come up and, you know, are trying to hassle him and get him out of the park, and he talks back to them. And they're just like, well, this is a perfect opportunity to kill you! He's basically being the drunk master. If you've ever seen any, like, the drunken master of Kung Fu, right. that's what he's doing. Okay. He is wasted and hammered. Does he heave so that the other guy slips in it? No. <laughs> Does he, like, Damn. sloppily do Kung Fu moves where he, like, uses his surrounding... Is it Jackie Chan? No, actually, there is uh, one panel where he poses, and in the background of his panel are all the moves he does on the people who attack okay, him. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so it's sort of like, you see the fight without really seeing the fight. Right. And then once they're defeated once, they're just like, all right, well, let's go after him again. And then <laughs> the other disciples from the Iron Fist attack the harassers, uh, and then they escape. And at the end of the book, because I'm going to spoil this whole thing. Sure. sure. <laughs> Wait, are we spoiling these? I'm I spoiling think so. mine. Okay. Yeah, we're going to spoil them. This is... That's why they're watching. But you didn't spoil yours. Oh, well, whatever. Well, except for the last... You well, I said there's a the last, last page thing. reveal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to give away my last page reveal. <laughs> so, spoilers. It's fine. Uh, the, it turns out that uh, the Iron Fist is working for the Emperor running Kun Loon, who is the master of the Ten Rings. What? And he is going to be the one that goes after our protagonist for this book, the drunken son of the Emperor, who was saved by the Disciples from the Iron Fist. Oh. So there's this weird rivalry yeah. going on, and... So I don't know I understand anything you just said. It's father me. versus it's son, funny. and the son is raised by the enemy. Thank you. Was raised by the enemy. That's well, he's going to be, like, was rescued, rescued by the rescued enemy. Rescued, and he's going to probably be, like, the Disciple of the Oh, okay. So, is, is the Emperor the Baron? Uh, right. <laughs> You know what? That's an excellent question. I have no idea. Is he Baron, Emperor, or something? <laughs> That's Probably. just the thing. <laughs> Battle world and the whole hierarchy of this world and, and God, Emperor, do, none of that ever is mentioned in this. Damn it. This is Damn. just a background story segueing into the family problems between the Emperor and his son mm -hmm. and how somehow Iron Fist is the antagonist in this story. So I don't know where this world comes from, but it does a good job of setting it up so that you're on board for what they're telling. Gotcha. What this has to do with Battleworld, <laughs> I have no idea. What oh. kind of, wait, what kind of setting is this? Yeah, like what time period? It's, well, it's in Kunlun, so it's, it's like, in Kunlun, so it's, it's like a ancient, uh, yeah, I would assume it's a nebulously, like, period, like an, an anachronistic, it's probably like an anachronistic. <laughs> anachronistic, yeah. if, if you've ever seen any old kung fu film, like, set in, say, China in the 1950s, where... They kind of have robes, but everyone's still wearing like traditional robes and garb, and they're they have. Is like, it like houses. Avatar? It's, I would assume it's like Avatar. Yeah, I'd say it's like Avatar, but it's Avatar: The Last Airbender, not Legend of Korra. Okay, right. there you go. All right, thank you. I was like, as you were talking about this, I was like, I kept jumping back and forth, and I'm like, it's like. Is it steampunk or is it cool? I'm like, yeah. is it? I'm like, it's Dynasty Warriors. No, it's modern. No, Dynasty Warriors. It's, it's yeah, not. Modern. It's not modern. Oh, God. It's like, <laughs> I would assume it's like Dynasty Warriors, but if they talk normally. <laughs> They talk plenty normally. <laughs> anyway, so uh, is it a recommendation? <laughs> is, it a recommend magic? <laughs> is it a recommendation? I would say no, only because right now it has nothing to do with Battleworld, but if you like this type of story, and I did dig it, mm -hmm. it's a good jumping on point because it does a great job of explaining its world and its history and how its Kun Loon is different than the regular Kun Loon. Right. So if you're interested in Iron Fist and that whole story, this is definitely a different book, and you should check it out because it does a good job of setting that. It also might so, be the fact that we really need the history of what's going on in this yeah. world before you can get it involved with Battleworld, right. because then you're going to be really confused when Iron Fist is not the protagonist. Right, right that, no, that's true. Yeah. I, I guess it would be kind of more interesting, too, if Battleworld crashes into Kun Yes. Loon. And, like, then having to deal with it then. Right. Yeah. That'd be cool. So, i definitely say it's a recommendation. Not so involved with Battleworld yet, but we'll see. All right, so I did Planet Hulk. Yeah. Um, I should start off with a disclaimer. I never read Planet Hulk, but Sal has explained it to me. Um, so I know kind of what goes on. Yeah. But I can't tell... Okay. Well, well I told you, like, it has nothing to do right, with... Right, it's not Planet Hulk. Planet Hulk, like, it, that's no. not it. It's Greenland. But mm -hmm. it's also... It's, first of all, it's not a planet. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not a planet, for one. It's also... There's a land filled with hulks, which mm -hmm. is not what Planet Hulk is No, nope. but I love the fact that they call it Greenland. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, but they're not all green, so... No. That's weird. Um, well, Greenland isn't green. <laughs> <laughs> this book is uh, written by Sam Humphreys and drawn by Mark Lamming. 
to start off, the art in this book is phenomenal. I love this art. Cool. It's so cool looking. <laughs> this whole book is so cool. I had a feeling that you would dig this book. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> you would, you awesome. Dug it. You would have dug it the most. <laughs> Um, so we start out in Greenland, and you've got these, like, tribal hulks, um, who see Thors coming down to attack them, like, oh, look, it's Doom's men, get it set up, and they're setting up a catapult to fire, and they shoot it up, and and it blows up, and it just kind of slows them down a little bit, and then Mm -hmm. the Thors come down and wreck their catapult. Wait, wait, (laughs) you're telling me they have a catapult, but they don't catapult hulks Yeah, they don't catapult themselves. They don't catapult (laughs) their best weapon, they catapult a flaming rock that isn't going to do anything. So I don't. They should have lit a Hulk on fire and shot it up there. <laughs> yeah, or just yeah. shot Red Hulk. He's got he can catch fire. Right, there are Red Hulks here who aren't named, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, none of these characters are named. Oh, uh, is, is there is there a cast system with colors of Hulks? I, like, I don't the, the reds are below the, the green. The reason I can't answer any of your questions <laughs> is because immediately after this confrontation, we leave Greenland and we go somewhere totally different. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we're left with a shot of a more well-dressed Hulk. Oh. It's all in, like, Viking era. You know, okay. Probably, but That's he's wearing, cool. like, furs and stuff. It nice. is cool. Um, and he, and they're, the, the Thors are like, let's punish them. We have to punish them for... And th- this Hulk's like, yes, Doom, punish them. Um, okay. So then we cut to the Hilesium. Okay. Um, or the Kilesium. I'm sorry, the Kilesium. <laughs> okay. On cool. the outskirts of Doomstadt. Yes. And oh, okay. we, we have Captain America in, like, old school, like, again, kind of Viking or medieval attire with a T-Rex. Yes. And he's fighting with the T-Rex. I don't know if this is a reference to something. The, the T-Rex name is Devil Dinosaur. Yes. Um, Who's a fan favorite? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, and he's he's just just defeated these people in the arena, and he's you know reveling. Yeah, reveling. The crowd's cheering, and um, but he's got a plan, and you can see in his head he's like, yes, yes, here we, it's time. Okay. Um, and then uh, a guy shows up who is Arcade, who I didn't know oh, no. his character, but oh. apparently is uh, yeah. you know, and he's like running the thing. He's got this entourage oh. and stuff, and he's like. Yes, this was a classic match, well fought, and um, then Captain America grabs him. It's like, this is it. This is the moment. And mm-hmm. he's like, what are you doing? My guards will will kill you. And then the T-Rex eats them both. <laughs> <laughs> so they're... That's the plan? Yeah, and it works, <laughs> because it's his T-Rex, so it's not going to swallow them. Oh, but he's God. like, if you don't tell me what I want to know, like I'll throw you down my T-Rex's throat. <laughs> Wait! The T Rex eats Cap and eats Arcade. Cap and Arcade. No, and no, no. I understand that it eats them both, but it's Cap's friend. Yes, I yeah, thought Devil he was Dinosaur, fighting the no, T Rex. No, no, Cap no. and Devil Dinosaur were fighting the. They were like a team. They were like yeah. a tag team. Oh yeah. my god, that's it's fantastic! fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing. I was going to be like, did Cap kill the dinosaur? <laughs> oh, no, he's with the dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He ripped his his head up, uh, broke his jaw, and then he played with <laughs> it for a while. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Cap's a big ape, monkey. And that stupid movie. <laughs> um, so they're chilling inside the mouth. He's got a torch. He's like, "All right, tell me, where's Bucky? Oh, oh, tell me now." And of course, it doesn't work, and they get zapped by lightning because immediately Thor's, Thor's intervene. Uh, so then we cut to uh, Castle Doom, and uh, Captain America is answering to uh, Doctor Strange and uh, Doom. Sheriff Strange. Sheriff Strange. <laughs> and Doom. Sheriff Doctor Strange. <laughs> Emperor Baron. <laughs> Doctor Sheriff, Sheriff Doctor Strange, uh, Baron, Sh- Baron Sheriff to the God Emperor King Doom. <laughs> DDS. <laughs> <laughs> That's Esquire. And uh, basically, we get a few pages where we explain the plot of the what's to follow. Okay. By the way, I don't know if this this is not. It doesn't say one of four. It does say part one. Okay. It's called the Oath. Like it's, it's a called part... the Oath. Yes. No, that's fun. So. That is fun. Yeah. Huh. Yes, the oath. Okay, which could be that's that's, that's yeah. nothing to do with what Doctor Strange. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so he's given a choice. Basically, you can die, or you can go on a special mission for Doom in oh. Greenland. He needs the Red Hulk to be killed because Red Hulk is apparently leading an uprising, oh. which is what we saw in the uh, in the the opening of this. All book. right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Red Hulk is leading an uprising of Thors? No, 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 no. Of Hulks. Hulks. Oh, of Hulks. Yeah. He's, he's why there was a 
team of hulks with a catapult fighting the Thors. I guess he's their leader. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought he was saying, yes, kill them. Yeah. The Thors to the hulks. Like, yes, I'm sided with I the Thors. I assume his plan is for... Maybe the Thors to enrage the Hulks, yeah. so they'll yeah. fight harder or something. I'm not sure. It's part of his plan mm -hmm. that they would get their stuff smashed. Okay, how that's did all we really know. Greenland not take over all the other battle worlds at this point? If they're just Hulks, <laughs> just Hulks. Because uh, Hulks well, can't swim. A lot of water. They say, yeah. yeah, they're yeah. too heavy. They're too yeah. dense. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fair. But they have yeah. catapults. Come on. Well, they, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but the Thors can smash. I mean, the Thors are stronger than them because they can't do anything against the Thors because the Thors can fly and stuff. And they also have Thor powers. There's yeah. like a bazillion strong. of them. Yeah. yeah. And none of them are like the Hulk, as far as I can tell. Right. Or maybe they are. I don't know. <laughs> they all look the same. So yeah. It's kind of hard to tell. Wow. It's kind of Hulkist. Um, <laughs> and what we find out is that. Bucky was actually sent originally to kill... Oh, the Red Hulk. Red Hulk. So that's how Doom gets Captain America to agree. Because he's like, normally he would just be like, no, I'm just... No, kidding. you're going on the yeah. wall or whatever, yeah. But he says, no, if you want to find Bucky, like, he's there. We sent him there. Oh. We don't know if he's alive or he's dead, but he didn't come back. Okay. Um, so, of course, Cap agrees, and he gets on his T-Rex, <laughs> which he rides, and they get teleported... I was going to say, how does the T-Rex get across the ocean? <laughs> yeah, no, T-Rexes just... can swim. The time little arms don't do much, but the legs. The legs are very... The legs and the tail. tail. Where all yeah. the power comes from. Yeah. yeah. Um, just mangle dots it... in those waters, but, man. But the, the hands do help them like, stay upright a little bit. Well, it's very... Because huge head it's steering. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> They're like little runners. Um, <laughs> so then, really nothing else happens in this book. <laughs> like, literally, they land in Greenland. They're attacked by monsters from the sand. Okay. Just, like, whatever. Which... You get a cool fight. Okay. All right. With he and the T Rex are battling these impossible odds because at first it's just one mm -hmm. and they struggle with it and then like five more. Oh, come out. cool. Um, and they're cutting their heads off and you know it's it's going crazy. And then just as they're about to be defeated, there's an explosion of electricity and fire, and you see a Hulk with like gear, mm -hmm. electronics and stuff. <laughs> Uh, but it's really fun. Not that much happens, like I said. But there's really fun fights, and it's just a cool, like gritty. Um, aesthetic. You got gotcha. Devil Dinosaur. I mean, it's well, yeah, the dinosaur. Come on. Awesome. It, all, it also seems like it matches up to a Hulk book. Yes, like, there's mm. punching. There's still a there's plot. There's a lot of stuff. smashing right. going on. But, but, yes. but there is a plot. A and it, it seems it's like, kind of like it's a simple plot. But yeah. It's, yeah, but it's engaging. Yeah, yeah. and it seems like the Greenland itself is is savage enough to yes. keep the interest of the reader. You know what I mean? And like, you get the Hulks lot... have to battle these things. You know what I mean? And like, you get it... the idea of like Hulks being savage creatures, and so they would be kind of like Viking esque. Yeah. But Bruce Banner, Hulk, being like on the outskirts because right. of his technology, separating, yeah. keeping him apart, his brain. That he's smart. Yeah, so, yeah. separating him from them. Uh, that's cool. That, that, that sounds like there's going to be a lot of like players in motion and a lot of story going on. I'm excited for that. Yeah. There's also at the end. There's a little other comic oh. of, called Amazing Science, and it's telling, like, the backstory oh. of the planet of the Hulks. Okay. Yeah. So is it a recommend? Do you, like, is it cool? Yes. To... It's definitely <laughs> yeah. a recommend for me. It's very cool. It's, yeah. Nice. It's fun. It's a fun little story. I didn't really know if I was supposed to know, like, this cap. I don't no, know. No, I think it was deliberate. Like, the way I looked at it, the, way I, the reason why I wanted us all to get, like, individual books is because I was like, this is the time mm -hmm. for no, for having no context. Right. Because, like, all the context you get is in that book. Right. Like, you shouldn't have okay. any, like, connection. And if you do, it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's like a, It should be like a Marvel movie. It's just a little right. ancillary knowledge. Yeah, it's right. well, like, I kind oh. of know that. Well, and it's you, like you just need to know that Cap and Bucky are friends. Yes, and if you saw the movie, you know that, right. like, so you're you're in. And they give you the backstory of what happens with, with like, how the Hulks are created. Yeah, right. right. If, if you, you care. If you even care. Yeah. That's why it's a backup and not part of the main plot. Right, right. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, Wow, nice. So we've yeah. each got uh, a different title. Tiffany, you're going to round it out with an overall book that we'll all get into, yeah. and, then, uh, mine, and then we'll wrap it up. Mine was Battle World number one, and here is the difference between my book and all of your books. My <laughs> book is a series of anthologies or vignettes. Oh. So I had two stories in my book. Oh, okay. Which I loved. Um, so I don't believe any of these stories are going to continue. You get a, sh you get here's something that happened, here's something that happened. It's literally as though a pool of writers came together and had said, "I have a cool story to write, but it's, I don't have enough." Right, uh, but it's like, only one book. You know what I mean? Or half a book. Um, and I think that's kind of cool. I mean, for me, the first story, I was like, I would pay any amount of money to see more of that story <laughs> leading up to this point. Yeah. But I'm not going to get that. Um, so in my vignettes, I had Soldier Supreme. <laughs> which was written by Joshua Williamson, who is the writer and creator of Birthright. I was already oh. on board right there. Nice. I love Birthright. 
um, with art by Mike Henderson, who did Nailbiter. Oh, shit. Um, and then the other story I had in there was Modoc Madness, God. written by Ed Brisson, who wrote Comeback. Oh, wow. So this is like a hack and splash book. <laughs> I know. With uh, art by Scott Hepburn, who worked on a lot of, has worked on a lot of comic projects. Um, what I probably, and, and some of us might know him from, is some of the Dark Horse, Star Wars stuff. Oh, cool. So oh. he's worked on various books through that. Uh, one of the Old Republic books, that kind of thing. Nice. Okay. So let's start with Soldier Supreme. Um, so this like takes place in 2099. That, that, oh, that world. okay. Um, nice. The character's not from there. No. But it, it takes place there. Um, it stars Frank Castle who currently has Doctor Strange's soul attached to him. Because Doctor Strange's body died during a vampire attack. <laughs> and of course they, it did. And they've been border hopping, essentially, right? Oh. And they can talk to each other. So, like, Frank's just talking to nobody, but, like, Strange is there, and, like, oh. he's annoyed. <laughs> Doctor Strange's like, oh, we shouldn't do it. Oh, we should do that. And he's like, shut up. <laughs> oh, my God. Like and like, Strange is kind of like I can hear your thoughts. Like, yeah. <laughs> stupid micromanager. Um, yeah. and they are being chased by the four. When they said that, I was like, "What four? And the then the Fantastic Four? four? Mm, well, the four horsemen. They are chased by the think. Infernal Four, who were once the new Fantastic Four. I... It's Hulk. Ghost Rider, Spider-Man, and Wolverine. Yes. Oh. Yeah, you're talking about that yeah. Fantastic Four. Um, no, they're the new Fantastic Four for a while. These are demonic versions of themselves, but they happen was they spent time in Limbo, which is also known as the other world. Yep. Uh, it's not the Catholic Limbo. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that, is that the uh, realm that Cloak teleports through? Yeah. Okay. I, what I know about it is that it it. It's, it has, it has like, a ground and a sky and all this stuff, and you go there. Um, it corrupts you as you're there. Mm. The longer you're there, the more corrupt you are, and they got trapped there. Okay. So now they are the Infernal Four. Um, and here's an interesting little fun fact while I was looking up what, the, what this was, because I was like, what makes them the Infernal Four? Because they look cool, by the way. Ghost Rider looks no different. Hulk <laughs> has glowing eyes. Wolverine looks awesome. Yeah? Yeah, and Spider-Man's got, like, this crazy black suit, which is different than the black suit Spider-Man, mm -hmm. and he's got, like, spikes on him and stuff. Like that. Yeah. They're little. There's, like, bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> um, but Doom, once in, like, the 616 universe, I think, or in one of the universes, I think yeah. 616, sought the metal Prometheum, which is only found in Limbo. Oh. So I thought that was an interesting tie-in mm. to, to Doom itself. To yeah. Doom, yeah. Um, anyway, um, this whole story... Is ra this is why I'm like, this is the one I wanted more of. I would have taken four books leading up to this short story um, because it's so cool. Um, they just, the whole story is they fight in the streets <laughs> of 2099. And awesome. you get to see Frank Castle wielding the magic Doctor Strange because Strange is with him, essentially. That's cool. Um, he also wears the Punisher suit. But he has, I believe, the I Ag Agamotto and the cape on too. <laughs> oh, so when he they That's start nuts. to fight, he pulls out guns, but they're magic guns. They're two magic Uzis. He's like <laughs> just blowing them down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Strange has taught him the spells and the words to use, so he'll just use them. Mm -hmm. okay. He dispatches the Hulk instantaneously. Wow. He grabs him and stops him with magic, and Frank just goes calm, and he turns into Bruce Banner, and he goes dust, and he destroys. It's just a skeleton. <laughs> oh wow! It's, That's awesome. Uh, these two put together yeah. are unfucking believable. Oh my god, that's super cool. That's um, awesome. He uses. Hey, I want to make sure I pull this up. The spell. One of the spells he uses is the rocket of Ragador. <laughs> and it's a freaking rocket launcher. <laughs> he dispatches a Hulk, Ghost Rider, Spider Man. Wolverine gets up behind him and snips oh, him right in the oh chest, no. and he's just, he just, goes jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the fact is, the four are trying to bring him in alive. Doom wants him, or Sheriff Strange wants him alive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's a contender. Yeah. Also, he's got Doctor Strange in there. Oh. Oh. I um, really... Well, because if you'll notice, the Thor Corps wasn't sent. Yeah. Nice. Strange oh. sought out the Infernal Four and told them to go. Oh, shit. Because it's got to be an inside It's a covert, job. yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And Frank Castle, like, Wolverine's like, I have to bring you in alive. So don't, I, I will bring you dead. Yeah. But don't push it. And, like, uh, Strange is like, you know, Frank, let, like, say these words. And Castle's like, no, I'm done. Mm. Like, he's so done with everything. Right. And he takes out, a, like, a magical grenade, essentially, and blows the hell out of both of them. Oh, cool. wow. Um, and then, like, you know, he 
comes back to Sheriff Strange, or Wolverine goes back and says, like, here's, here's a shirt, and it's like, you know, it's the Punisher shirt, and it's got, mm-hmm. like, the snicked holes in it and right. blood on it. Uh-oh. And Strange is like, you were supposed to bring him back alive. And he's right. like, well, he's Frank Castle, <laughs> all right? Like, what do you want from yeah, me? And he's, he's not like, going to do that. And he's like, until, like, you're barren, I'll compensate you for the loss of your people. So, like, yeah. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So he leaves, and the reveal at the end of my short story was that Strange attached himself to Wolverine, and he's like, don't you dare blow oh. my cover, because uh. I will take us all down. He's <laughs> like, but with you being immortal, right. I, I, will con- I will fight on forever. That's right. cool. And I was like, That's oh. awesome. <laughs> That's It's like, cool. are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> this is the coolest Doctor Strange has ever been. That's cool. Um, which then leads me into the next one, which it's was Modok <laughs> Madness. I know you're not a fan. No. This was hilarious. <laughs> all right. And by the way, uh, first what, of all, what is Modok? I'm going to tell you about that. Okay. I, I do want to touch on real quick the art for this. It was a fucking amazing for um, for Sorcerer or for Soldier Supreme. It was great. Mm-hmm. It was gritty. It was just in your face. Like you know what I mean? It was just perfect. It fit the story perfectly. You know, like, the, um, Mike Henderson, like, draws the guy's bodies a little more stocky, but mm-hmm. it, it fits. Like, you know, Punisher is like a wall of a man. Right. And the Hulk is huge. And, like, Spider-Man's built the right, you know, it's just yeah. like great, you know, really dark colors. Explosions were fantastic. All the action sequences, right on. Cool. Nice. Um, all right, so MODOK. MODOK is, well, first of all, the location, I'm not sure I understand, because in the 2099 mm-hmm. one, or in the first one, it said, like, 2099, which I was like, that is one of the battle worlds, and I right. know that they're there. Right. Because even Castle says, like, the like the land of the like, tomorrow wouldn't be a bad place to die. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, we're definitely there. That's a cool line. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, this <laughs> one, it, it says, the iron. Mm-hmm. And then it says, the war zone. Hmm. Now, I do know for a fact that Modoc's location is in a, a secret aim hidden base. Yes. So I don't know if it's not like there some, is a war zone. Well, there you go. And maybe it's the, the iron threw me because I was like, yeah. Which maybe that's the name of the facility. Yeah. So, the war zone. Yeah. So yeah. like it hits this one there because like the there are many. The there are many aim secret bases. Right. Throughout right. and like we find that out. Yeah. Um, I don't really mind us spoiling this one. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> For those who don't know, MODOK, which they do tell you this in the story, in the beginning, they were like, MODOK, mental organism designed only for killing. Uh. Uh, MODOK was an AIM scientist. Uh, there was a failed experiment. He was charged with trying to come up with a living computer system yeah. to discover something that I can't remember. Who cares? Um, and it was failed, and he ended up becoming it. And initially he was MODOK with a C, which was mental organism designed only for computing. Oh, oh computing. Oh. Um, and then, then he went to killing. It. Again, these are all tied to Battle World. The first one was tied to Battle World much more um, directly. Directly, yeah. in my opinion, this is tied to it, but mm-hmm. indirectly. In that it takes place in Battle. World. No, no, no. The Thor Four shows up. In it. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. but it, <laughs> it has no. Right now, I don't believe this has anything to do with anything that's gonna happen. It's just a funny story right. that that Ed Brisson or Brisson wanted to tell. Well, I assume um, that like the, they talked about how the premise of Battle World is. It's more like these are the cool things that happen. Yeah, and that's that you'll never see in the, the Hickman will never allow. Exactly. In his so, Modok has decided this Modok in this battle world has decided what he needs to do is he's going to overthrow the God King Doom. Oh, and the only way well, he can clearly. do that, Modok often bites off more than he can chew. So well, that the only way he he's can, got a big mouth. The only way he can do this, the only and way no he, genitals. <laughs> Tiny arms, tiny legs. Sir, he does. Yeah. <laughs> The only way he can do this is by getting more Modocs, because they're the only ones he can trust. Uh-huh. Wait, no! So he uses he uses his AIM scientists in their... Is this gonna be like... Hang on! Let me get there. And he summons them all, and there's like the Spider-Man Modoc, and there's one that looks like Ghost Rider, and there's like a baby one, and there's a more advanced one, and one from the past. These are all your Kirby's. What? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. This is Moga sucked in all these other characters and became. It's, yes. Okay. What I need you to imagine, and this is what I finally decided on, it's like if Glenn Beck pulled in a bunch of other Glenn Becks because he's like, these are the only people I could trust. Uh-huh. And then you just filled the room with that ego, and they yeah. just yelled at each other. Right. <laughs> like, it was, I was going to liken it to, to Calvin 
when Calvin duplicates himself yeah. so that they will do his homework for him. No, no, I, I no, because Modoc's like, we're gonna throw overthrow the God King Doom, and then like I'll be in charge, or like, and then we'll be in charge. Yeah. And one of them's like, uh, excuse me, uh, how could we all be in charge? Wouldn't only one of us be in charge? And the first Modoc's like, yeah, but that would be me because it was my plan. Like, what? I don't know yeah, about that's that. That's the end of the Powerpuff Girls movie with all the mojos. <laughs> It's amazing though. It's a great that you know what that works perfectly for Modoc. That all like you're you're not capable of leadership. I, however, that is the entire story. Oh my god! Because then screaming at each like, other. the more mature ones like yeah, but you know what? Like you know no, like that's not how heroes should act. And like I align myself with Shield. They're like you align yourself with Shield, and oh, like they just all end up fighting. And he's like, forget it. Send them all back. <laughs> and they're like, fine. And like. Send them? Who is he talking to? The AIM scientist! Who's what he's working keeper. with. Oh. Um, and like like I said, you got all these different Modocs. You do have one that has like a small, regular-sized head, but he's like a machine-looking thing. They're like a robot body with legs. Oh. Like with real functioning legs and arms. Oh, wow. And he calls himself a more evolution. <laughs> he, he's more evolved than they are. Right. And you do have one that's like really far behind in the evolutionary period of Modoc, who's like, whoa, hang on, everybody. Before we do anything, can someone explain to me how you captured fire into these little glass things in order to illuminate this facility? <laughs> because I can't get over that. <laughs> and my dad's about the time when it's like, Okay, oh. everyone's going back to the portal. All and right, then, all right. I got the fire in the bottle thing. Now explain to me the slinky and how it walks downstairs. <laughs> that he goes to send them back, and that's when the child Modoc, who's a female, is like, "Whoa, I didn't get to have my daddy time with Modoc." Because, and all the Modocs are like, "Who sired this child?" Yeah, who's that is Modoc not what we're here for. <laughs> we are not a breeder. Modocs are not for that. <laughs> the one Modoc raises his hand, just like, eh, mm, and then they know. all just fight. And then, and then, and then the Thor Corps shows up because like Sarah Strange keeps sending us out to deal with these Modocs. There's always a secret aim facility. There's always a Modoc there. Oh my god! And they get like the two of them go in and they're like, "Isn't it kind of weird that there's nobody here to like fight us in battle?" And like, like and they're like, "Yeah, I was kind of looking forward to that. Like verily, that kind of thing." And they go inside and like all the Modocs are like, <laughs> killed each other. No, some of them, they're all mostly alive. <laughs> like they've just dispatched each other entirely mm -hmm. and the of course like What the hell? <laughs> that's, and that's the story. And that's all that happens. Genius. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, that sounds fun. I it's absolutely fantastic. loved it. They hinted that the next one may have to do with Hulks. Which oh, I thought oh. was interesting okay. because they look like orcs to me. Which, when you were talking about it, yeah. I was like, hmm, how is this going to, like... Yeah. So I'm wondering if the next issue of this is going to have some, like, tie to... You think it's going to be tied in to the Not what? of Planet Maybe. Hulk? Oh, <laughs> oh, I wanted to mention one thing. In the background, by the way, I'm sure Sal will throw up an image of that. That's what Wolverine looks like in this. Nice. I like his outfit. It's really yeah. cool. It's different. It's um, cool. But in the background here, in the Thor Court, you'll notice the Destroyer. Oh. Is one of the Thor. Destroyer! <laughs> Not the Godzilla villain. <laughs> no, but I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that is one of the de the okay. story was a Thor. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. And one Thor has a huge problem with it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, come on, guys, guys, seriously. You guys. Um, do you think Wolverine, Doctor Strange is going to come back and be important? Right, or I think hope that was so. Just like or that was just. I would love that, but I I don't know because I know that this book is not because it it does end with end period. Right. Like mm, that's it. It's over. Um, yeah. That was your window. Could, yeah, like, could Hickman, like, involve him? Certainly. But I don't Will know. Will he? Probably not. No, and like... But someone could pick that up again. Yeah. But, like, what an interesting concept to have Doctor Strange's soul attached to other yeah, heroes like, like that. And what yeah. a great... That's a good idea. Just idea. Because someone's just like, alright, well, once all this battle war's over, I'm gonna come out with a one-shot. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. like, how cool would it have been to see... The Punisher and Strange, because clearly, like the two of them have been together for a while now. Yes, like, they, well, they, they, they addressed it a little bit in, in Original Sin, where they both go to the astral plane to like mm -hmm. find like who assassins, oh, really? and like, and they hate each other. Uh. Strange's like, "Why did you? Why did they bring you with me? Like, you were so annoying." And Frank's like, "Shut up!" <laughs> like, it's like the da 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 da. Like, oh my right? god! But it's perfect to see them so, like. Fused to each other. It's yeah. great. I think that Battle World number one, or Battle World in general, like the title, it's again, it's gonna be one through four, is a really interesting concept to be put out by Marvel. Yes. Where they're just like, here are a few short stories that we didn't want to develop into a larger title or try to stretch too thinly. Like yeah. the Modoc one, 
that because I know Modok has his own world, and I believe they're coming out with a Modok assassin yeah. book, which is going to be completely different. But they wanted to tell this story, and they're like, "I'm not going to tell a whole like, story." That there's a joke this. here. Yeah. Let's yeah. tell the joke, and that's yeah. it exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's really cool. Yeah. Like I, I haven't seen that in any of the events that we've covered so no. far. That's smart storytelling. Yeah, yeah, it's just fun. You don't. You, certainly, you could pick this up if you're looking for some more supplemental material. If you're looking for just a good read, it's fun. If you're looking for something that you know isn't going to necessarily ever continue, right? Or you're just looking um, just to you know get a sampling. Like, because really, that's what this is going to be. You're not going to be tethered to one right world. Right. Like, you don't need to know what's going on. You don't in the other books. exactly. You yeah. don't have to know, and you don't have to be like, all right, well, you know. My like I got like I'm strapped for funds. I'm gonna pick up maybe a few of the tie-ins. I picked up like number one of of like Kun Moon or, yeah. or Master of Kung Fu, and like I didn't really like it after issue two, but I feel like I'm attached to it right. now. Yeah, no battle world. Like, if this... you didn't like it, the, the next issue will still might be cool. Exactly because it's gonna be two or maybe one different like anthology story. Yeah. So and so far, both kickoff stories have been great. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. really fun. That's, that's cool. Seen, that's that's really cool. That's like an old school like amazing stories. Yes, it so, is. Like, Trust me, you want to read this. Frank Castle's dialogue alone <laughs> is worth it. And even Modoc dealing with other Modocs. Like, I was verily aware of what Modoc was. I trust me, I got it. Like, I know what Modoc's all about now. Like, I yeah. understand the ego, I understand the drive. Yeah. It's worth it to read the interactions between these characters in both stories. So, if, you're, if you have any interest in it at all, definitely pick it up. Cool, cool. So there you go, guys. That was Secret Wars TLDR, the first week of tie-ins. Next week, we'll, I guess, pick up another whole batch of tie-ins and see where we go from there. Yep. And, cool. uh, yeah, so, anyway, what was your favorite Secret Wars tie-in? Let us know in the comment section down below. We'll talk whoa, whoa, about it. Whoa, didn't you, didn't you want to touch on one more that you read? What was that? Another tie-in? Oh, yeah, I read Ultimate End. It was terrible. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. I am Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. <laughs> I'm Timothy. So long, guys, and happy reading. <laughs> Crack them that? books! Ultimate End. It was Ultimate fucking bad. End? Yeah. What is that? It's the end of the Ultimate Universe, written by Bendis. Oh. Yep. Sal Didn't we fan. see the end of the Ultimate Universe Didn't in we? Avengers? Did, Did you? you?